Chris with Packet Pioneer. I just wanted to take a minute to shoot a quick video just to answer a few questions that I get a lot of times when I start teaching a Wireshark class. And that is, how do I set up a clean install of Wireshark? How do I get it ready for analysis? Well, there's a few basic things that I do every time that I install Wireshark. So I'd like to show you those here. Uh, the first is you notice here on this copy of Wireshark, I've just opened up a sample trace file. If you come down to the bottom, you can see that I'm using the default profile. So one of the first things that I do when I install Wireshark is I'll come down here and I'll go ahead and right click it or double click it if I'm on my Mac like I am now and I'll go to new. What that does is it'll create a new profile for me and all the configuration changes that I make will be saved in that profile. So I'll go ahead and call this one initial setup. Once I hit OK, here I can see that I have the basic starting uh, columns there up on the top, the summary view, and now Wireshark is ready to configure. Now for me, I like to leave the coloring there. If the colors bother you or they distract you from what you're trying to do, you can just come up here to the color button and you can uncheck those. Uh, for me, I've gotten used to them, so they help me out, so I often leave those alone. The next thing that I do is I need to add a delta time column. Now we can see right here the time column. I leave that configured as a running total of time. It starts off with zero on packet one, and as we go through the trace file, we can see where in time we are, or how long we spent capturing this trace file. So for me, the, one of the first things that I like to do is add that delta time. Now delta time is the amount of time between packets. So it shows me when one packet came in and how much time I had till the next packet came in. So to do that, I can come up to Wireshark, go to Preferences. Now if you're in Windows, Preferences is going to be available under the Edit menu all the way down at the bottom. Since I'm on my MacBook, I, it's under the Wireshark dropdown. So we go to Wireshark, Preferences. From here we can go to Columns. And what I'm going to do is add a custom column. So to do that, I just hit the plus button. And now I can come in here and I can name that column whatever I'd like it to be. So I'm going to name this Delta. Now the value that I would like to be displayed here can be selected from this menu on the right. So I can come over here and scroll up to the top. And the value that I want to show in this column is the Delta time displayed. So again, that will show me the time in between packets. That's important when we're measuring latency. It's important that we're measuring application response time, server delay, client delay, and several network delays. So it's an important column that we need to troubleshoot. Now for me, one of the things that I like to do is take that delta time column and drag it up near the other time column so I have those right next to one another. Once we click OK, we'll see that delta time column appear. Now another thing that I like to add to my Wireshark right away is a button that I can use to find TCP errors. Now the display filter that I could add here is tcp.analysis.flags. Now this will show me all kinds of uh, duplicate acknowledgement problems, fast retransmissions, previous segment not captured, so things that will indicate packet loss or other types of TCP conditions that I could be looking for, window size, that kind of thing. Now for me, I use that filter quite a bit. So instead of typing it in every single time, what I can do is come over here to the right and I can just add it as a button. Now over here under label, I can add a label something like TCP bad, and that'll show me whether I have TCP problems or not. Once I come over here to OK, now TCP bad will be added as a button. So instead of needing to type in that display filter every time I want that, I can just come up to TCP bad, click that, and it automatically adds that for me. Now from here, how I further customize Wireshark really depends on the type of analysis that I'm doing. It could be that I need more TCP values up here in my columns, or maybe I'm troubleshooting voice over IP and there's some other values that could be useful to me. And that's where you can start to create different profiles by protocol. So as you can see here, I like to have a voice over IP protocol, a TCP plain, TCP advanced, uh, things that are specific to those protocols that are useful when I'm troubleshooting. 
So there you go, just a quick video to show you how I initially configure my Wireshark when I am troubleshooting packet captures. Uh, hopefully this was useful to you and I'll see you on another video.